Hello, welcome to your physics teacher, and here I'm going to be showing you how to analyze graphs further from a velocity which is high in red. Now, let's take a step back and see what we've done if you're just tuning in. Here we have Sonic, and what does Sonic like to do? He likes to collect the gold hoops. So this is used to remind us to think about when a velocity time graph shows an object speeding up or slowing down. So you can think that whenever Sonic has already obtained the hoop, he's able to speed up. So in a velocity time graph, if Sonic moves away from the hoop, he's already sped up. So as you can see here, he speeds up and continues speeding up. But these two have different steepness. So when you're comparing a velocity time graph and the steepness is different, in other words, the velocity changes at a different pace, that's what we call acceleration, which was just the slope of the velocity time graph, which tells you how fast velocity changes with time. And in the purple section, we looked at one second time interval, and that approximately changed by three meters per second. So you can say that the acceleration changes by 3 meters per second in each second that goes by. And the green line here, in one second of time interval, it changed by 2 meters per second. So the acceleration was 2 meters per second per second, which in other words means velocity increases by 2 meters in each second that goes by. But now we want to be able to show this in a different way, which we can just focus on how quickly the velocity is changing with time. So in other words, we're going to be creating an acceleration versus time graph. So if you recall what we did before when we went from position time graph to velocity time graph, we had to line up the time axis to be nicely below one another. We're going to repeat something similar here, so we're going to make sure to draw our graph right below it. And we're doing this such that the times are going to match up nicely. What I mean by that is the one second should line up nicely with the one second. Two seconds should line up with two seconds, three seconds, and so on. And in this case, our axis for the horizontal is going to be time, because that's what we lined up nicely. And vertically, we're going to now have the slope of velocity time graph, which is acceleration, which is meters per second per second. Now, we already calculated the values from the time interval of 0 to 4 seconds. We calculated it earlier, which was 3 meters per second per second. So let's include a table here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. Maybe let's redraw this. One, two, three, four. What was the units? Meters per second per second. All right, so now we're going to be talking about time intervals. So from the time interval of zero to four, Sonic was speeding up at three meters per second per second. So let's try to draw what that looks like. Oh, it was for four seconds, right? So in these four seconds, the acceleration was always uh, 3 meters per second. Right? So you can take the data points if you wanted to. And then for the green line, we found that the slope of the velocity time graph was 2 meters per second per second, which is our acceleration. And we can plot that for the duration of the time from 4 seconds all the way up to 8 seconds. So let's go to 8 seconds here. And during this time interval, it was accelerating at, uh, let's make it orange, red. Two meters per second per second. So this is how we can go from a velocity time graph to an acceleration time graph. All we have to do is calculate the slopes, and because this were Linear graphs, the slope is not going to change, which is why during the first four seconds it was constant acceleration at three meters per second per second. And during the next four seconds, 
acceleration was constant again, but this time at 2 meters per second per second. And this is an easy way to draw acceleration, which is time graph, by looking at this motion. But there's an issue here. Notice that we're moving really fast, then we we're moving fast, but not as fast. So here there's a break in the graph. We cannot calculate the slope at exactly 4 seconds. So what we need to do, we need to, if you're taking advanced functions, this is how we will denote the whole, because we do not know exactly what happens at 4 seconds. So this point will be undefined. Because if you were going fast, and then you go not so fast, you have to be slowing down. But to make our graphs simpler, we are only showing the linear graphs. But really, there should be a curve in here. But uh, that would be too complicated for our purposes. So that's why whenever you're going to see acceleration versus time graphs, there's going to be a jump discontinuity, which means there's going to be a hole where we cannot take the instantaneous velocity at 4 seconds. But we still fully haven't described this velocity time graph because now we know how quickly it is moving, what direction it is moving, but we don't know how much distance was covered in each, in each period of time. So that's what I'm going to try to show you in the next video, which is going to be how to calculate the distance travel in each time interval.